Likutei Sichos, Chelikutes, Volume 19, the fifth Sicha for Parshas Ekev. This Sicha will explain the mitzvah of mezuzah, the one we put on the door, that is quoted in this week's Parsha. And also we're going to get to learn the great effect of this mitzvah, the great quality it has in terms of protection that it provides, the security that it provides for the people who perform the mitzvah. So now our Parsha, we read what we all recognize as the second chapter of the Shema, which we say every day. And towards the end, the last two verses of it, that is chapter 11, verses 20, it says, Uchsafta mamazuzis besecha vishrach. That you should write them, you should write these words, the words of Shema and Vahayim Shemaya, which is what's written in the mezuzah, and you should place them on your doorposts. And then it continues in the next verse, and it says, the reward for this mitzvah is, Leman yirbu yemechem v'meimenechem, in order for the your days and the days of your children that they be lengthened on the land, and so on and so forth. So in act, in, it's interesting that in the Shulchan Aruch, it actually gives us the Psag Din, it actually gives us as a ruling that, quote, anyone who's careful in this mitzvah, one who's careful in the mitzvah of mezuzah, his days and the days of his children will be lengthened. So you see that this is a reward for the mitzvah. And in fact, the sages tell us, and this is also brought down in halacha, that when somebody puts a mezuzah on their door, somebody fixes a mezuzah on their doorposts, Hashem provides them with a protection both from inside and outside. This is actually second, is a second and separate thing to the reward which we quoted before. In other words, there is the reward which the verse tells us, the reward of long life. And then there is, as we'll soon get to appreciate, an inherent quality in the mitzvah of putting up a mezuzah that it provides, it provides protection. You see, in general, what is the idea of a reward? The idea of a reward for a mitzvah is really, it's like an added thing. It's not the mitzvah itself. It's just, if you do this, I'm going to reward you with that. But it's not inherently part of the mitzvah itself. But this, the fact that Hashem protects us because we do this mitzvah, or by means of putting up a mezuzah, we now receive Hashem's protection on our homes or businesses, wherever it is that we're putting up the mezuzah, that is an inherent benefit from the mitzvah itself. It's not something added to the mitzvah. It's not something separate from the mitzvah. It is the mitzvah itself. So says the Rebbe, this uniqueness that we have exclusively only in the mitzvah of mezuzah, that what? That the protection is not just a reward, an added thing, but it's the mitzvah itself. It's a derivative of the mitzvah itself. It's, in other words, a direct positive consequence of the mitzvah itself. This actually creates a distinction in the manner this mitzvah is performed versus all the manner which all other mitzvahs are performed. You see, usually, when it comes to all other mitzvahs, Chazal tell us that in general, yes, a person needs to do a mitzvah for the correct purpose. Meaning, a person needs to do a mitzvah for the sake of the mitzvah, or for the sake of the commander of the mitzvah, for Hashem, for the sake of serving Hashem. However, the sages tell us that if one is not yet on that level, so they tell us that a person could indeed do a mitzvah, even if it's lishma, even if it's not for the true sake of the mitzvah itself, rather for the benefit one will get for the mitzvah, because they say eventually, because of, you know, getting into the habit of doing a mitzvah, even lishma, you're going to come eventually to do it lishma for the sake of the mitzvah. And even the Rambam spells this out, and he tells us what is the gradual way of training from, you know, young age until one gets older and wiser, you know, training one to do a mitzvah. And he says, you start with little children, first you entice them with the benefit of getting a reward, getting a candy, getting a toy. As they get a little older, it becomes a little more mature reward, so to speak. And the older one gets, as they're continuously um, uh, uh, creating a, a, a second nature, so to speak, a habit in doing the mitzvah, eventually they're going to come to do the mitzvah for the utmost sake, which is for the sake of Hashem. But you understand, it's understood 
that even though the ultimate is to do a mitzvah, not for the benefit that one can get from it, not for the, quote, reward that one can get from it, but rather to do it for the sake of Hashem. But it's understood that even if one didn't do it for that reason, meaning even if one did a mitzvah for some kind of side benefit, still the person did perform a mitzvah, and still it's counted. In other words, it has the value of a mitzvah, albeit not a perfect mitzvah. See, because otherwise the sages could not encourage us to do that. If it was absolutely not considered a mitzvah, the sages would never encourage us to do it, and the Rambam would never encourage us to teach children or youngsters to do a mitzvah if it's totally false and invalid. So it's obvious that it has the value of the mitzvah. But still, it's not perfect. In other words, the utmost valuable mitzvah is when it's done purely for the sake of the mitzvah without any benefit whatsoever. If the benefit comes, it comes, but that's not the reason that shouldn't be the motivation why one is doing the mitzvah. So now the distinction that we said, that that's when it comes to all mitzvahs in the Torah. But when it comes to the mitzvah of, of mezuzah, this quality of the mitzvah, namely that it provides a protection, this is actually part of the mitzvah this in, indeed does not diminish from the mitzvah. In other words, it's not like you're doing it for this sake. This is the mitzvah. And when you're doing this for the, cause, of course, because Hashem said so, but you're providing yourself also protection. That's what Hashem wants from you. He wants you to put a mitzvah to provide yourself protection. And the interesting thing he says, moreover, says the Rebbe, you can actually see it in how this mitzvah is meant to be implemented. The rule is, that the Hasez and Halacha, that where do you put the mezuzah? You put it betefach hasamach l'shus aramim. Tefach means the, 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 the two, three inches closest to the outside, to the most outer part. That means if you have a very deep doorpost, you don't put it closer to the door, you put it closer to the outside. Why? And it says in order to provide a full protection to the whole inside, because if you're going to put the mezuzah closer to the door, part of the wall, part of the building that is, won't be protected. So you want to protect as much of the building as possible. So what do you, what comes out from this says the Rebbe? That it's not only in contemplation, in machshaba, in thought, that one has the kavana, or one is aware of the fact that this mitzvah provides protection. Moreover, the mitzvah was designed in such a way that it's action, meaning the implementation of mitzvah, is, the imitation, implementation itself is an, 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 exhibits the fact that this is to provide a, a, a protection, and that's why you're supposed to put it in the outermost spot on the doorpost. Now, of course, at the end of the day, we still need to you know, emphasize, reiterate that one doesn't put a mezuzah just to provide protection. It's not instead of buying, you know, calling a security company. One does the mitzvah because Hashem said so. But this is what Hashem wants. This is the will of Hashem that we put up a mezuzah and it provides us protection. Now, and it's, we must also note that at the end of the day, what happens if somebody put up a mezuzah not for the sake of the mitzvah, but because they became convinced that it provides protection. In other words, their sole purpose of putting it up is to provide themselves protection. It comes out, says the Rebbe, that even though, of course, it's not a complete, it's not a wholesome mitzvah, but still, they did perform the mitzvah, they did do the mitzvah of mezuzah, and especially mezuzah, because inherently it's about protection, but albeit not the best mitzvah in the world, not the best way to perform the mitzvah. Says the Rebbe, but now we can ask the question. There is a halacha in the Rambam, the Ramam writes a rule in relation to the mitzvah to, to mezuzah, and he says, quote, those who write names of various angels, protecting angels, in the mezuzah, so he says, they fall into the category of those that don't have a share in the world to come. And he says, he continues, and he says, because these fools, these imbeciles, not only is it that they've not, let alone that they've voided the actual mitzvah of, of, of mezuzah, but moreover that they took such a great mitzvah and turned it into something merely as something to like a, a kamea, like an omen to protect themselves for their own benefit. Now, according to this Rambam, the question is, we just concluded. And we concluded that this is actually what comes out from halacha and from what the sages told us. That the whole mitzvah of, tzedak, of, of mezuzah, the whole point of it is protection. Here the Rambam seems to tell us that if one does it to protect themselves, they're, they're, they're terrible. And this is negating the entire mitzvah of, of, of mezuzah. So how can we reconcile this? How can we reconcile this? So the answer is number one, 
the Rambam says that if you write it into the mezuzah, the fact is that once somebody adds one letter or there's one letter missing or subtracts one letter from what's supposed to appear in the mezuzah, and that is the two first chapters of Shema, Shema and Bahayim Shemaya, then the mezuzah is voided. The mezuzah, the mitzvah is now voided. It's not a kosher mezuzah. And this the Ramam already stated previously. That's number one. Number two says the Rebbe, even the Rambam himself elsewhere explains that if somebody studies Torah, even though you cannot study Torah to heal yourself, but at the same token, says the Rambam, if somebody is well, somebody is in a good place, and they want to provide themselves an extra measure of protection. They want to use, for example, words of Torah or verses of, of Tehillim, whatever, whatever whatever may be, in order to, to, to provide an extra measure of protection. Says the Rambam, it's perfectly fine. You're allowed to do it. So what do you see from this? That there is room for using Torah, using mitzvahs, even according to the Rambam, to provide yourself protection, to, to, to form an extra layer of protection and security around you. So then what is the Rambam's problem? In other words, why does the Rambam have to take such great issue with these people who wrote into the mezuzah? And the answer is, think about it. Inherently, the fact that they're adding names of angels into the mezuzah to provide protection, that in itself voids the whole idea of mezuzah. In other words, that in itself is a declaration, an announcement, so to speak, on their part, that they fail to, 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 to acknowledge, or the worst, that they, they, they deny the fact that the mezuzah itself is inherently providing a protection that it has the qualities of protection. And therefore, they're adding the names of the angels. That's the issue with it. However, therefore, concludes the Rebbe, that even according to the Ramam, and certainly according to all the other halachic authorities, it's certain that if one affixes a kosher mezuzah, a proper mezuzah, and does it so not only to serve Hashem, but also for protection, or like we said before, Hashem wants us to affix it in order to have protection, then the person has done the mitzvah in its complete form, and if they did it only for protection, they're lacking a little bit in the quality of the mitzvah, but still the mitzvah is done. Now, based on this, says the Rebbe, this meaning that we conclude that the inherent quality of the mitzvah of mezuzah is to provide protection, now we can appreciate a Mishnah in the tractate Kalim. Now, what does Kalim mean? Kalim means utensils. What is this tractate about? In short, this tractate describes the various utensils that fit into the category of utensils, of a receptacle. Thus, they become susceptible to impurity, to tumor. In other words, if something is just, let's say, like a plain piece of wood, a solid piece of wood that doesn't have any design and cannot contain anything, cannot hold any liquids or what have you, that is not considered to be a kli, it's not considered to be a receptacle, and therefore it's not susceptible to tumor. It's not susceptible to, impu- to, to, to ritual impurity. Only if it has some form, some part of it is a kli and can either hold water or is designed to contain in it as a container some kind of liquid or powder, whatever have you, then it becomes susceptible to, 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 to impurity. So the mission over there enumerates the various, uh, the various utensils that fit into this category. And one of them is a walking stick, a cane, which is hollowed out for the purpose of housing a mezuzah. Now, why would you house a mezuzah in a cane? We know the rule is that if someone takes a mezuzah and puts it in a stick and hangs it up on the side of the door, that hasn't, the mitzvah has not been performed. It has to be affixed to the door. So why would someone do this? So you can see from this that, that, uh, that there was a time, there was a place, and then you see the Mishnah doesn't negate it. The, the Talmud doesn't say this is a wrong practice. It actually lists it as something which apparently was common and at least prevalent in their times that people would do this. People would walk around with the mezuzah, not in the sense of performing the mitzvah, but for what purpose would you walk around a mezuzah in a hollowed out cane, in a compartment in your cane, in order to provide protection. In order to provide protection. And in fact, there's a story related in the, in the, in the Talmud Yerushalmi, in the Jerusalemite Talmud. Over there, the Talmud tells us a story. And in this story, you can see that even when you don't have the component of the mitzvah, of mezuzah, you still have the component of the quality that is of the mitzvah, that is of protection. What's the story? There was a king. Uh, his name was Artivon. And he sent, I guess he was the, um, 
the emperor or someone very certain, someone very high ranking there in the Roman Empire, and he sent a large gem, very expensive gem, to Rabbi Yehuda as a gift, as a sign of friendship. Rabbi Yehuda took, sat down, he wrote a mezuzah, he wrote a kosher mezuzah, wrapped it up and sent it back to him as a return gift. So Artiva sends a message back to Rabbi Yehuda, I sent you something which is worth, I don't know, millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars, and you send me back something that's worth a few dollars, a few pennies. What is this? So Rabbi Yehuda sent back to him and he said, you sent me something which I have to stay alert all the time and watch it and keep an eye on it. I sent you something that even when you're sleeping, it's protecting you. You don't have to watch over it. Not let only you don't have to watch over it, but it's going to protect you. And in fact, that the conclusion of the story is that it was actually put to good use because it says that there was some kind of demon, some of the demonic, uh, uh, the, the demonic figure or something that appeared in his daughter's room and was tormenting her. It didn't allow, didn't give her peace, and it didn't allow her to sleep in the princess's room. So they took the mezuzah and they placed it there, and immediately it disappeared. It went away and it didn't come back. So you see that the mezuzah provides provides uh, protection. Okay. And now with all of this, says the Rebbe, now we can appreciate a story, one of the many details of the story of the arrest of the previous Rebbe. We have the privilege that the previous Rebbe wrote literally a play-by-play account of his whole arrest, even the interrogation and everything that went on there. And one of the things he describes is that during the interrogation, and this is after he describes, and he had spoken about it later years also, that he had made a very uh, a very concrete resolution that he is going to treat them, meaning those who arrested him, he is going to treat them like they're ayin ve'efes, like they're totally not, like they have no authority whatsoever. In fact, he would respond to them only in Yiddish, and they went out of their mind, they were going crazy. One of the things, they got so frustrated, they said to him, do you know where you are? And he said to them, yes. I know where I am. I am in a, certainly, I know that I'm in a place that is exempt from a mezuzah. It's patrum in a mezuzah. And he says to them, there are such places that are not never obligated in the mezuzah. For example, a horse stable, a bathroom. And so this place too is a place which is exempt from mezuzah. Now, if you think about it, says the Rebbe, what was he trying to do? He was trying to assert and to affirm the fact that he is in control and he as a Jew, not just he as a person, he as a Jew, he as a Rebbe. So shouldn't he have approached it in a more positive manner? He could have said the same thing by telling them, I know I'm in a place where Hashem is in control, where Hashgach HaPratis is in control. Why did he have to approach it in a negative manner? Say it's a place that is not obligated to mezuzah, it's a place that is exempt from mezuzah. Says the Rebbe, based on what we said above, we can understand. Now the Friedrich Rebbe, the previous Rebbe, wanted to take advantage, he wanted to have access, so to speak, to this special quality of the mezuzah, this component of the mitzvah, namely the component of protection. He wanted to enjoy that even there, or especially being there where he was. Now, of course, obviously a mezuzah he didn't have with him, and to put up a mezuzah on the door was out of the question. So the only way he can do it, he accomplished it in a twofold manner. Number one, he discussed the halacha, he learned, he discussed the matter of Torah pertaining to mezuzah. And we know that when you talk about uh, a mitzvah, when you learn about a mitzvah, on some level, that's like considered like you're performing the mitzvah. And then, number two, by him clarifying, by him establishing that this place does not get a mezuzah, that made the place connected to the idea, to the mitzvah mezuzah. In other words, let's look at it this way, a slightly different uh, approach. There's two ways that a house becomes connected to mezuzah. There's a positive manner. You fix a mezuzah because it's high of a mezuzah. It's obligated to have a mezuzah. Or in a negative manner, that by the house not having a mezuzah, by determining, by establishing that this house does not get a mezuzah, that now has some connection to the concept, to the idea of mezuzah. And in both ways, you are accomplishing a commandment of the Torah. In the manner when you put up a mezuzah, because the Torah says you should put a mezuzah here, and in a, in a situation where it calls for that you should not put up a mezuzah, by not putting up a mezuzah there, you've also now followed the rulings of the Torah. 
So therefore, the Friedrich Rebbe chose to emphasize this house is part of mezuzah. I mean, this building, this edifice that I'm in is exempt from mezuzah. With this, he connected the place itself to the concept of mezuzah, thus enjoying and, and being able to take advantage of its protective qualities. So the Rebbe says this, the conclusion of this sicha is obvious a, a, a motivation, a motivating um, force, a motivating factor for all of us and to encourage us to go out there and be very active in the Mifza, in the Rebbe's special campaign of seeing to it that each and every Jewish home, not only each and every Jewish home, but each and every room in the Jewish home should have a kosher mezuzah. And this not only provides protection for them, the individuals in whose homes we put on the mezuzah, which is enough of an incentive for us to go out there and do it. But the Rebbe says, moreover, because all Jews are connected. So when one Jew puts up a mezuzah, this quality, this effect of protection becomes now effective for all Jews worldwide collectively. And therefore, this should encourage us to go out there and help as many Jews as we possibly can to have a kosher mezuzah.